Wait, wait, three, two, one. Okay, my presentation is well, I feel why end of the year, my reflection. Uh, I'm basically taking five points from the whole semester and um, that really made a, a difference and, and changed kind of my thinking and, and what I hold dear uh, to my heart. And the first one is, is just start, starting with trust. And so I, I don't get this wrong. I got this from the uh, characteristics of improved school districts theme from research. It was one of the first papers we uh, talked about, but again, you know, by my pictures, it's all about trust being in not just any role, I mean, a superintendency, but especially in any type of leadership role. Um, if you don't have the trust of your board or the people around you that are gonna follow you, um, you're pretty much done. You can't, you can't do much more than that um, in, in, in regards to getting a whole team together as a cohesive unit for a mission or their, your vision. So this was really big. I'm not gonna read all this to you, you can read it, but, but basically that trust is important. Um, and one of the things they said in the, uh, in the uh, research was that this study indicates the importance of trust between superintendents and union presidents as being instrumental on a positive culture. Um, if you wanna get positivity uh, culture, you're gonna have to get trust in all your leaders. So, so trust to me is one of my foundational characteristic aspects that uh, no matter what role I'm gonna be in, I'm hoping that they're gonna gain my trust. And, and by doing that, you'll see in a couple of slides um, that that's gonna be essential to getting them on your side. Uh, the next one is partnership. And this one I got from the school superintendent theory, practice, and cases. Um, now what you see here are four terms and the level of association. And when you think about it, the partnership, most partnerships are gonna be with a business. You know, what they were talking about earlier, how, you know, you always get sent these schoolologies or emails saying, hey, try out this product. I mean, it's a good partner. It might be a partnership with, with uh, the school and an outside agency. But uh, the reason it's like this is because at the networking side of, of, of the partnership, um, basically both sides are still have their autonomy. They're not, they're not really, they're just networking. I'm gonna get some information from you, I'm gonna get it back, but I'm gonna do my own thing and the partnership is gonna do their own thing. Now as you move up, when you're really collaborating, that's when both sides, if you're real, the true collaboration with your partner, then, then you're gonna lose some level of autonomy. It's gonna be both sides trying to uh, come up with goals and, and see how both sides can help each other accomplish those goals. And, and it's very important when you get to that collaboration side, an example of this could be the school or the university partnering to operate an expert, experimental high school. That's what they, they said as a, as a, um, um, as an example. And the next one is communication. You're just, I mean, like they said, like we've been talking about, if you can't communicate with somebody, um, then you're not gonna be able to and this one I got from, from the school boards. Uh, eight characteristics in a, of an effective school board. And on this information side, it, it's not only you as a superintendent giving the information to the school board, it's a whole community. So you're talking, you're gonna have your, your principals, uh, APs also be in that loop of give, uh, deciphering some information to, to school boards. And, and again, that second one is just about networking uh, making sure that all the information is given to, um, if, if, if a school board member wants something, well, it's gonna be known to every school board member. That way, no one's left out. And that's what this represents here, that every information you get is gonna be uh, given to the other school board members so everybody knows they're on the same team. And then lastly, this design thinking. I think this one, you know, this is about innovation. Um, this is the hardest one, I think. We, we got this from David Kelly, that video we saw, but this is the hardest thing um, to adjust to in education, in my opinion, and because it's about taking risks. I mean, if you look at these cell phones from seven to 11, they're, they're all innovative. But, but what's gonna happen is that as, as you're gonna take risks, if you really wanna get to this level, and everything's gonna change consistently. 
And but with this design thinking, you know, if you put yourself in that mind frame of I'm going to take that risk and I'm going to be able to um, accomplish something greater th than yourself and getting other people to buy into that type of design thinking. The, the one thing I do remember is about the seats. I don't know if you saw the video, but they reinvented the, um, the school chair. And that was like, I was like, wow, uh, that was amazing uh, part of, of getting the, uh, of being innovative. And again, this last slide, I mean, it's just about um, the difference between uh, traditional and design thinking, you know, um, your, your, uh, what is the right answer? What is the right question? You know, you're always questioning somebody. And if I go back to that chair, I mean, the, the biggest piece of this is the empathy of people. So I'm looking, what they did was they looked at the students' chairs and they said, well, what do they need in there? You know, I mean, they're uncomfortable. You know, they really don't have a lot of space. So they questioned all that, they questioned all that, and then they created something better that, that uh, students need, needed in, in the classroom. Um, but those, those are basically my aha moments from, from the whole class. So thank you.